In today's episode, we're going to show you how to build a boat with a very exotic tool. A hose. Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm MP. We love the ocean, so we decided to make it our home by buying a massive wooden schooner, which is unfortunately sinking. A lot of people believe our boat is doomed, but we refuse to settle on that thought, and we are willing to do whatever it takes to bring it back to its former glory. Join us on this refurbishing journey and wish us luck! Hmm. Now, what's super cool is with this big delivery of wood, we've got loads of boards to choose out of to make these planks. We can now either decide to measure some of the boards that we don't need to cut too much off to make a plank. If we cannot cut a plank out of one of these thinner boards, we're going to have to resort to one of the thicker ones. One of the bigger ones over here, which go up to about 90 centimeters in thickness, in width. I need to figure out what that is. So that's what we're trying to figure out now. Not to have to waste any of the wood, or at least as little as possible. So this is one half of the thickness of the ship, like it's going to be plain sand and cut over there and flattened over there. Traveling around the world, my feet will tell me where to go. I'm not afraid to step outside and see the world for what it is. No, spending all my time with people that I barely know. You may have thought that I was lost, but all I need is room to grow. Come and home to put a flower in your hair. So this plank going up there the top of the frames has finally been finished it's been painted with a similar to lead paint because lead isn't allowed anymore and that is going from let me have a look there all the way to there then this just has to be cut nicely so it fits in the corner but that'll be done while it's on it's a big piece i think it's eight meters so yeah it's going to be quite a do to get on there. teams from Elio to William is the team that works hard that guy over there is the one who's hardly working and here this little one is the one that doesn't even bother to pretend okay. he's working so come up here yeah I'm so angry so what team do you want to be in that team the me and Caio team And my team is, well, filming!
the rainbow. That's so my belief. It's behind all the trees. I want to see the rainbow. Oh, the pink. This is shot. Crazy. So here, right in the bow, we already have two of the shear planks, like the two layers, right? But it's the only one that's doubled layer so far. And if you continue to the length, we have a second one. And we just put in place the third one, which is being screwed in right now. How wide is it? 95? Yeah, so 90, 95 centimeters. So that is going to have to go over there. It's going to be a big job. What are we doing, SMP? The old sawdust of the plank. The sawdust of the plank absorbs the humidity of it, so yeah, it, it is its own remedy. So yeah, we try to cover up the planks as much as possible, but as the rain is so on and off, we're sometimes doing something on the boat and it starts raining and it takes a while for us to cover it and your mask is full of sawdust. That did loads. That's a cat in the Yeah, in your room, I think she would. You know what happens behind the camera? She's like always borrowing the camera car keys from and putting them back in my pocket and she's always pu pushing my shorts down and then I'm trying to stay serious and not make noise for the filming but go child I'm a serious person back to filming so this is the Pasquia rule they use it to no, get no right, the English will be here will it? if we find it <laughs> I'm learning the way I'm learning. So this is the Fasquia. Rule. And we're in Brazil. And it used it just it was on the boat to show where this next shear plank should start and where it should end. So it grabs all the shape and size and now it's brought here to this huge plank so you can know how to cut it. It also gives us the distance from this point to the edges of the plank so the plank can be cut correctly. So it can also if it's eight centimeters up, six centimeters down. There's more plank on that side than this side and it can be curved as well.
We always make this guy look super cute. Now this is the 99% of time where he is not like that 1% that we show you. Oh, those teeth are sharp. So here there's this little sapwood, the outside of the tree that's not as strong as we need. But it finishes right here. So just by cutting in the diagonal like this, it will be enough. So here I don't know what they're doing but somehow they've got a hose going from uh, what are we here port all the way over to starboard filled with water and they are filling the hose with water so they can see the height of both of the shear planks so if for example the hose is completely filled here Zeka's on the other side of the boat here the water's coming up to this point and it has to come down to the bottom of the no, shear plank on the port Zeka. side as well as the starboard side where Zeka is <laughs> So sorry, I meant the water has to actually come to the top of the shear plank, which is the height of the deck. So let's go and have a look what Zeka's actually doing on the starboard side. So here on the starboard side, the bubble is almost exactly at the height of where the deck should start, where the top plank finishes. On the other side, they're busy moving it around. Who would have thought of that? So here as we've added another plank on top of the one that we were doing before the hose is coming out again it's still got water in so you can compare the height of this plank compared to the one on the other side if you can see here the hose is actually being passed under to Zeka who's gonna have a look at this side over here Sometimes I feel alone, you know it's me and my guitar Looking up the darling stars, seeing where we supposed to go now Oh, feeling lady, tell me what you mean to me And I'll build a house in Byron Bay, if that's exactly where you
So we've got more parts of our top plank over there. Top plank, which is three planks long, two planks thick. Two more over there stacked on top of each other, nice to stand it, ready to be put on the boat. And we're going to make two more out of this whopping piece of board, which will later also head onto the boat. And that will be the top plank finished. this big number three four and five is the number of the frame on this plank not necessarily on the boat the 30 or the number on the left is the thickness or the width let me think the yeah the height of the plank and the 13 is the distance that you have to go from this point down to the bottom following this line to the bottom part of the plank so let's head a bit further this is a 28 centimeter height of a plank and eight centimeters to the bottom here let's go here and this is a 29 and a half centimeter high plank with 13 down to here Well, Elio is planing down the edges of the plank that comes after these two planks. We're going to put on one of these two planks. So where is the first one going to go? Over here. So where it's wooden colour, it's because that's the outside and it's the second plank. So this one, or oh, that one, not sure which one, is going to go up from there, crossing that joint that's just been sanded over there. And it's going to stop just before that joint so it'll probably stop around here uh zek is actually signing up all the what's it a filling compound that's covering all the nails and then we can paint over all this again with the a kind of bedding compound synthetic one and then the next one will go on the other side so the other one of them will do the same thing on port and the one that Elio is making right now in the in the factory we'll start where this one stops it'll cross this joint and head all the way to the stud
So that plank is on. In the meantime, this one was cut, which is another sheer plank. And I'm busy painting the second one, which was cut another second layer of the shear plank. So work doesn't stop. All we have to do now is this one's almost dry. This one's almost painted. When it's painted, it's going to head over to the boat. But this one looks pretty dry, so that's going to head over already. <laughs> I'll show you the view from up here. So what happens is the front gets put on nicely so it's in the right place. The nets, the first nails get hit in already and then we work our way back. So me and Nico now are actually gonna tie this to the other plank so it closes a bit and then we can start nailing and putting clamps on more to where I'm standing. Now, as you can see, they've come about halfway to the plank. As we go along, we're also making sure it's high enough. So the top can always be planed off, but it's more about this bit meeting that bit correctly. So as we go along, the plank is also high, but higher or lower. So this matches this. So I don't know if you can see two things and one thing makes you not see the first thing. Anyway, the first thing obviously you've put a proper tarp over. It's not finished yet because that bit's exposed and over here, but that'll change. We're gonna cut up the orange one which blew off to fit in between those two blue ones nicely. But the second thing that you might notice, not because of the tarp, is there is no more gray shear plank anymore because what was gray was actually the in between bits so as you can see there's two shear planks going all the way across nailed together over here all over here and what's happening right now is the last part of our shear plank first layer and second layer is actually going on if you look over here it's not fully against it yet but that's the last part of shear plank going on if I head over to the other side, over here, you can see it's already on. You can see actually the first layer sticking out there and the second layer is on. This is a very big step because now all the frames are not going to move anymore or at least hardly not. Which means we can just start throwing the planks on which is a lot faster process. Having a look inside the engine room. This extra frame, I don't know if we ever told you that there was one gap between the last two frames aft. That was too big and it made so much sense to just have a frame in there. So have a look up here. That frame never used to be here. So now those were made for a while and now they're actually busy building the floor timbers that will connect these two frames that weren't here. If you look at it, it makes so much sense. Doesn't it just make sense that this frame is here before it was just the gap without anything so this is going to be new and even though we said before that all the frames were on we didn't lie because all the old flames frames were replaced this one is just adding on to what was before so yeah that's one part of the floor timber the other one is in the workshop but that's that I'm super happy about the top there's the other one just blew off. The only difference I did is the orange one was, you know, those little rings that come on the tops. These are the most useless things ever. These. What I did is I just nailed some planks all the way across them, which hopefully the little planks will actually keep the top against the boat and not rip. We'll see if that works. I might have to just add some more, but what do you think of the top? I think you did a great job. We did a great job. What did we use to 
Put it against the wall. Nagelchus. And Blockius. <laughs> Before we head off, we would like to invite you towards the sunset with us where we welcome our new patrons. So thank you very much to everyone who joined us this week. Chris. Walter. Brad. John. Barry. Mark. Doug. Scott. Dennis and Tony. Donald. Frederick. Ruben. Christopher, Ernesto, Corey, and Mark. And thank you for donating through PayPal, Stephen, Halim, Webfront Design, Paul, and Matthew. Thank you so much for supporting us. We're going to show you how to build a boat with a hose. <laughs> how to build a boat with a very... <laughs> how to build a boat with a very exotic tool. A hose. How to build a boat with a very exotic tool. <laughs> a hose.